Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be tackling a data structure that is commonly seen in many USACO Gold problems called the Binary Indexed Tree, or BIT for short. Now, what is the purpose of this tree? Well, in order to see what the purpose is, let's first look at some other data structures and identify their shortcomings with certain problems. Suppose I had an array or an array list. For the purposes of this example, it doesn't really matter. Right now, it's in a sorted order. Maybe that sorted order is four, seven, nine. And now my goal is to keep adding elements into this array so that it maintains its sorted order. Well, let's say I wanted to add a five to the list, right? A five would go here. And as you can see, in order to insert this five, I'd have to make a spot for it and shift every other element down to the right. As you can see, I made the extra spot and I shifted the seven down and I shifted the nine down. Now looking at this, we can see that we have an O of N complexity, where N is the size of the array if we want to add something into this to maintain a sorted order. Now O of N, sure, that's not O of N squared, but it's pretty costly and we definitely want to reduce that number down. Now that is what the binary tree accomplishes. For a, any binary tree, what we do is we start with a root. Let's say that root is 10. Now, just as a heads up, for those of you who understand binary search, this will make a lot of sense to you. Let's say I wanted to insert a 3. Well, I look at the 10. Is 3 less or greater than 10? Since it's less than 10, I put it to the left of 10. All right, easy so far. And if I wanted to add a 12 in or 13, I just put it right here to the right of 10. But say I want to add a 5 now to this list. Where does the 5 go? Well, the 3 is already to the left of 10. The 5 can't just take its spot. So what we do is we see that 5 is less than 10. So we go to the left of 10 and we come to 3. And then we see 5 is greater than 3, so we put it to the right of 3. Let's follow this example for a few more numbers. Okay, so now we have what I've told you is a binary tree drawn out. But why does this help us? Well, although it doesn't look like it, it's actually in a perfect sorted order. Let's say I wanted to find if there is a 5 in this list. Well, if there was a 5 in the list, it would be to the left of a 10, to the right of the 3, and oh look, there's our 5. The use of this data structure spans through many different fields, and essentially it works very similar to a binary search. The reason it's useful is because we were able to add elements to our tree maintaining this sorted order in O of log n, where n is the amount of elements in the list. Now, I don't know about you, but O of log n addition is a lot faster than O of n addition. Now, granted, in an array, if you wanted to look up an item or you wanted to see if an item existed, you'd need O of one time to access. But in here, in order to see if an element exists, you have to follow down this tree, which also takes O of log n. So as you can see, it does make accessing slightly longer, I mean, from 1 to log n, but it also makes adding so much shorter. And that is why we use binary trees. If I wanted to add a 12, I would say, okay, 12 is to the right of 10, so we go to the 13, it's to the left of 13, so we go to the 11. It's greater than 11, 11 doesn't have anything, so it has a 12. Now, you might be wondering, how do we store this tree? Well, the way we do this is actually kind of confusing at first, but it makes sense as you go on. 
Imagine if this 10 didn't exist, okay? Well, this, whatever this th three starts off, is a tree itself, right? It has the same properties as our original tree, except it's just a little smaller. And this is also a tree. What branches off from the 13? And they were all joined to this 10. Okay, so the way we think about a binary tree is that we start off with a value. In this case, it's 10. And 10 is a tree, sure. And it owns a tree to its left and a tree to its right. These are both their own trees. So you might be wondering, well, how do we identify leaves? And for those of you who are wondering what leaves are, leaves are essentially these. Items at the end of a tree who don't branch out into anything. Well, the key word there is they don't branch out into anything. Their left tree would be null and their right tree would be null. And this makes our calculations a lot easier. Suppose we wanted to find the minimum value of this tree and the maximum value of this tree. How would we do that? Well, the minimum value is right here. It's zero. The maximum value is right here. It's 17. And as we can see, the zero, we just got that by going left node, left node, left node until we got to zero. And to get to 17, we just keep taking the right path until we get to 17. And that's actually how we find the minimum. While we still have a tree to our left, go down it. So 10 says, okay, I go to the three tree. Three says, I go to the one tree. One says, I go to the zero tree. And then zero says, I don't have any, but any trees next to me. I must be the minimum. So let's look at how we implement trees in Java. So as you guys can tell, I've sort of written a few lines of code just defining the main function. And I set up this while loop so that we can constantly add numbers to our tree. So the way we make a tree is we make a separate class and I like to call my trees nodes. And each node has a left node and a right node. Remember, it has a tree to its left and a tree to its right. It also has a value. That's how we're sort of sorting it, so to say. And so we can make our constructor as such. Now that we have our tree set up, we want to define our root somewhere. So we can just say node root equals new node. And let's say, like we did in our example, our beginning node is 10. As our user gives us an input of what they want added to the tree, we want to be able to say, okay, call an add function that takes in a root and add. So now we need to create our own add function. So let's do that. As you can see, it's, vo it's of type void because when we add, we don't need to expect anything back in return. So how do we figure out where in the tree we need to add it? Well, if the value of add is less than whatever roots value is, we want to go to its left tree. If it's greater, we want to go to its right tree. So it's similar to a binary search and we actually use recursion to aid our approach. So if the root value is less than the value that we're adding in, we first want to make sure this isn't where we should add it. We do this by checking, okay, does the right node of the root, is it null? Does it not have a tree coming out of it? If so, then we set the, that to be the new node that we're adding, and then we return. Otherwise, we need to recurse. We need to call the function and actually add it to wherever the, root, the right root will take us, and we still want to add the same value. We can essentially copy paste the exact same code, except change it to the left node. So if root.value is greater than the add, then we want to actually go down the left root. Now there is the case of if it's the same, but for our purposes, just so you guys can get a better understanding, let's assume everything we're adding is distinct. Well, congratulations. We have written 
our add function. This is all that we actually need. So we can actually add it to our root. But now let's say we want to print it out just to make sure we know it's in sorted order. We need to do something called an in order traversal. And for such a complicated name, it's actually really simple. So let's try an in order traversal right now. We would want to print zero, then one, then two, then three, then five, then 10, then 11, then 12, then 13, then 17. You might be asking, what's the pattern? Well, the pattern is that we started at the leftmost node, went back up to our parent, the person who owns the left node is called the parent. And then we went to its rightmost node. Then we went back to this one's parent, then to its rightmost node. So we can actually solve this with a recursion approach. How do we do this? Well, we first want if the root is null, then we don't want to print anything return. It's always good to have a null check because we deal with nulls a lot in our trees. And we essentially want to print out the left first, right? So we do the left first. Then we want to print out ourselves. So we print out whatever root value is plus a space. Let's print out the same line actually. And then we run the same thing except on the right node. Very simple code to print out. And now let's try this run in order traversal on our root. Let's see how our code works now. So let's say we want to add a 12 to our tree. Like that, 10 and 12. All right, maybe that was too easy. Three, seven. As you can see, we're maintaining it in sorted order and it's working flawlessly. Well, there you have it. This is a binary index tree in action. Now, if you want more help on how it's used in actual contests, you can check out on the spot Sam's video for sleepy cow sorting, because that problem involved a tree. Just to review what we've covered, we have covered binary index trees, a data structure that is used for maintaining some kind of sorted order in a really short time complexity. Adding is going to be O of log n, and accessing is O of log n. Thank you.